What up, y'all? It's your boy here, JC, up in the Metro North and Grand Central Station. Getting ready to go to um, White Plains, New York, to meet up with my brother, Eugene McDonald, and uh, Legends Martial Arts Academy to catch the Henry Hooft seminar and uh, film what's going on with that camp and everything. A um, little bit of history with them, and we'll get into that in the video, but uh, this is NYC Fight TV. It's, uh, it's been almost two years since I've seen this dude. Shout out to Eugene uh, McDonald. Um, I was doing events in uh, Queens, and I did one in Yonkers um, with, my, uh, with my partner, Adrian Zapp, and everything. And uh, Eugene was, uh, you know, he was a constant at my events. He, uh, we become good friends. You know, he's a cool dude. And, uh, and I get to see him after two years from when I had spine surgery and some other things that I have gone through in my life that I'm not going to talk about in this video. But uh, I'm excited and um, we get on this train right now. Really excited because uh, <clears throat> I get to see, uh, you know, my people and um, as well as uh, Henry Hooft. Um, Henry Hooft is a very, uh, a world renowned uh, trainer, striking coach. Um, to train a lot of fighters that are in the UFC, so that's pretty cool, you know. Adds an extra layer of credibility to the show. So uh, excited to bring that to you guys. Well, just got off the train here in White Plains, meeting up with my people, and. Uh, so, heading out to see my boy, Eugene, and uh, we're about to get it in. Nice. Well, you don't mind if I film the entrance, right? No, sir. What the fuck? Look <laughs> at the goddamn thing on my face. Eugene, <laughs> the camera loves you, darling. That's right. Man, jeans. Make sure that we. Jeans. Do some kickboxing tonight. Yes. How you doing, Jay? Good, man. It's been a minute. How's everything, man? Good. Yeah, man. It's one of my uh, champions here. What's going on? Antonio de Jesus. His first MMA fight at 135. He's this big. The kid is this big. <laughs> and then the depth. I gained 18.2 pounds back in the, in the, in the day from way into the fight. I walked in like, he looked at 27. Still a little bit more time. Yeah. A little bit more time. We'll figure this out. You got a weight a lot in your, and you're still young. That doesn't really matter. You can do that, you know, but you get older. Yeah, I can't keep doing it. <laughs> Uh, that's Henry Hooft. Uh, hi. <laughs> Go. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. Chip, sir. Well, you already said it. I'm Henry Hooft. I'm here uh, because of, not because of the fight, but I was in New York. I know you here for a while. I uh, did a couple of uh, training sessions and seminars at the other gym. Now he's here at this gym, so this is the first time that I meet you guys um, and at this place. I always like to start with a little, a little, like a little small introduction. Most of the people already know who I am or what I do. They don't know who I am really, but you know what I do because of the films and the videos that you see with my fighters. But my main passion is kickboxing. Uh, MMA is my work. Um, I still love, of course, what I'm doing, but kickboxing is really my passion and I like to teach. I'm a real trainer. I don't call myself coach. Uh, where I come from in the Netherlands, that's two different things. I think coaches, they talk more. It's not wrong, but they have more of a... Yeah, they have a different task for a fighter, probably. Uh, a trainer is somebody, for me, that teaches skills. So what I do with you guys today, I'm not going to make you very tired. I mean, you're going to get tired, but I'm not going to make you tired and make jump ropes and all the stuff that you need to do. But I'm going to try to explain you the, the when and the what and the how. You kind of use certain tactics or techniques that I think will help you guys uh, get better at martial arts. 
I just want to do uh, what I like to do best, and that's this teaching. Okay? So, put everything on, shin guards, gloves, and we're going to start right away. That was a pretty awesome uh, introduction. The workshop's about to happen. I'm excited. Um, let's do this. Okay. Good. So, every time we, when we do a technique or when I explain something, just like this, make a little bigger core, bigger circle so everybody can see it good. I use Eugene with, uh, with uh, the explanation of what we're going to do. Again, in training two, I start. Uh, like I start in the fight, we're not just going to throw a 10 part combination, but I start the same as in the fight. When you fight, you cannot just open up with everything you have. You first need to see where your opponent is going, if he's fast or not, if he's a striker more, or is he kicking you right away. So it's very important. The first actions, the first combinations that we do, again, I do with everybody in my gym. So the first combination is very simple. You stop all right? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm confused. confused. I'm confused right yeah, now. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. If you stop all, if you switch with a regular guy, just try to be in the same stance. You know, so if you, if you, if you tra train with a, an orthodox guy in your regular stance, just stay in that stance. Don't go change because the other guy is southpaw. You know, the, you're going to fight somebody in the same stance. So again, we're moving. And movement is a little this. The first is a jab. second is a straight. And the last one is a one-two. So again, okay, we move. A jab. Two. Oh, two. Bad. One, two. You yeah, haven't seen me for a while. That's fine. One, two, long. One, two. That's it. You see the movement? It's not too crazy, but you have to understand you won't fight at the distance. Here you're going to hurt each other, hit each other. You always want to be like one step in, one step out. So when he punches with the jab, he steps back. Two, in and out. One, two. You understand? So you step in, you step out all the time. And you move your angles. So very simple, jab, the movement is here, jab, boom, two, one, two, and you move. Okay? Take a partner, hit these other gloves, one, two, one, two, let's go. One, two, one, two, very simple. So far, so good. Um, the man gets down to business, um, teaching everybody fundamentals, movement, you know, keeping it simple but very effective. It's pretty awesome. Here's the Japanese. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's good. So, again, we start very relaxed, very slow, very relaxed, but it was good that you help each other out. Stay long in the beginning with these punches. When, when I make a, a right hand, I don't want to be here touching him here. I also don't want to be here because there's no impact here. But that little, that little bit, and you see, that's why it's very important. If you're sometimes by yourself on the back, take your gloves out and feel how it is to really hit with a knuckle, you know? Because a lot of you guys have gloves on, and it looks like that this, this is already made as a fist, but there's no fist. You need to really squeeze your hand and you need to really turn it over. So if you hit, you need to turn it over so you hit with the knuckle. Otherwise, people break their hand here when, when they got punched here. And then break these, these little bones here. This, nothing happened with this. You can hit the wall with it. It still hurts though, but... But again, this. This is a locked up punch. You see? This is a locked up punch. Don't forget that. We go to one-twos. Movement. One-twos. Two. Sorry. Yeah, don't worry. Right. One-two. <laughs> Movement. And again. One-two. You see how long this punch is at the end? One-two. Yes. And I move. I move with him. I move with him. One-two. <laughs> That's it. Move. One, two. So that's another thing that I want to explain. If you train with your partner and he's maybe not so good now, I've seen it. I do this already 34 years. The, the guy that you don't want to train with is going to be champion later on or he's going to be your best training partner. The real, the real strength of every gym is in the group. Not with the teacher alone, the group. So you need to be helping each other out. So if you got a, a girl or a younger person or a person that's new, help him out. Make him your training partner. 
Don't be like, I don't want to train us. This guy holds for me good. You know what? If you're going to compete, you're going to, get, you're going to find a guy that doesn't do what you want to. to. To grow the group, you need to train together. That's why every time we switch, when I say switch, take somebody else. If it's a girl, young, old, skinny, yellow, doesn't matter. The group is important, okay? Okay, here we go. One, two. So let's go. Let's go. So you see, same technique, two different ways, doesn't really matter. Uh, we start, I want to see the hook, the left hook. So we're going to do a one, two, three with the left hook. Same question, every time the same question. Coach, trainer, how you want me to make the hook? You want me to hook like this? You want me to hook like that? I got bored from my own, from my own uh, sayings, but I say always the same thing. I don't really care as long as the guy goes down and your hand is not hurt. That's the perfect hook. But there's a difference. If this hook is a little shorter than this one. And if you want to kick, I prefer to throw it on the outside so I have a little bit of length in my kick. But if I close by, if I'm in this position, here I want to throw it here. Or even in a clinch position, I want to be here. Because this hook, again, the same way. There's, three, there's a couple of ways how you can throw the hook. Let's stay in the guard, okay? I'm not going to hit you. Don't be worried. Don't worry about it. So you got this one where you hit them on the inside, really. You should step in with this one, really. And you hit him on the inside of his face. Most damage. The nose, the eyes. Especially with small gloves, you can't really block it, you know, in kickboxing you still can guard up, but that's the one. And they have the other one, when he's in his defense, you hit him downstairs or wherever, you hit him behind the ear. Where you see everybody doing that, you know, the break dancing. That's a very dangerous one too. So again, the same punch. You can throw it on the inside of the gloves, on the inside of the guard, and it depends on where his hands are. So, we're going to do the same one, two times. One, two, three. The first one is forwards. If you go forwards, you use this one. One, two, three. So, I do it one step, huh? So I see a lot of people stepping with every punch. With this one you don't need to do. I'm here. I'm here. I'm over. I step in and it's bam bam and the left hook is on the inside. The second one, I do it backwards. So he comes to me and it's one, two, and then this is long. We on the glove, on the glove. I don't want him to do on your beautiful face. So backwards. Backwards when he comes. One, two, long. Forwards. I'm here. One, two, inside. He comes to me. One, two, long. So you learn also how to punch forward and backwards. But again, the longer one set up the kicks, and also you counter, uh, if he throws a right hand, this one is like easy to roll with. So again, two ways, forwards this, backwards this. If you and your fight want to change it yourself because you feel more comfortable, like, it's all good. But I just don't want you to hit with the thumb or this hand. A lot of people hit and they hit it with this. That's why I say, you come in early and the coach open up the door, go here, feel it. It's a knuckle, you see? It's my knuckle. It's my knuckle. It's my knuckle. And then you can feel, you see? It's only these two. And you only need these two. Here and outside, everywhere. Don't fight outside, by the way. Okay? So, switch partners again. Forwards, one step. Pop, pop, pop. Backwards, step back. One, two, long. Okay? Switch partners, here we go. Let's go. One step back.
Hey, make the one, two, three on the back. Show me, show me, show me what you just did. Keep your hands on the phone. Your hands on the phone. That's it. Remember the name. Remember the name. Yes. Remember the name. Okay. Really good. I, again, for forward, backwards. It's not easy to do it backwards. It looks it's simple, but it's a lot of risk. You got a guy or a girl that really wants to hit you. To make that step backwards and throw that left loop is not so easy as this loop. So again, drilling is important. Let's see that right hook. Same, forward and backwards. If I go forward, I will do it, relax. I go forward, so I'm, I'm, this is the fight stance. I step in with the one, two, boom, boom. And with this right hook, I step in a little bit and I make it on the inside, you see? With the one backwards, he comes to me, I will stop him here, boom, boom, and from here, I just throw it on the outside a little bit. See with a little angle. What I said to the kid on the phone, this one is on the phone because don't put your hands in front of your face. Because every time you're there and I give a jab, you punch yourself in the face. You need to see clear. This one is here, this one is here. This one is here, this one is here. Yeah? I have a little thing, a video, put a long time ago, probably it's already gone with, on the YouTube. But for me, the perfect stand in kickboxing, if you stay, just watch it. If you stay regularly, you put your arms down, your elbows here, you do one step back. And now you turn your hips a little bit, and your arms are here. This is my perfect stance. Why? There's not a lot of stuff that he can hit, and I use this as my shield. This is my cover-up. I can always use it. Instead of bobbing and weaving, I just block it. And also, my legs are good. I can still block. So when you move with your partner, think about that. Don't be too much square. It's too, it's too much space, Look, especially for him. I can't hit him so, so much because, <laughs> because you're big. But if he, moves his, if he moves his space to this, and his legs to the sofa, Look, there's not so much space there. You understand? So don't get that wide stance. Of course, I know in Muay Thai, my wife's from Thailand too, so I know in Muay Thai, it's all like this. But in MMA, that doesn't work. That's a double leg, single leg, every day, all day. Try and make yourself a little smaller. And once that, he wants that leg, boom, you can shoot, or you just throw the knee up that we're gonna do later on. We're gonna work a lot with our knees. So again, watch your steps. One more time, I go forward, one step. I step in, one, two, one, two, inside. I go backwards, he comes, I stop, I stop him there, from here, outside, yeah? Same part, the one-on-one, let's go! can fight or back forward or backwards. There's not a lot of people that can do both. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the MMA fight San Hagen with Jan. You saw that one is the pressure fighter and the other one is more the mover. But at one moment, pressure will break something, you know? And if you can't punch backwards, like with real power, because if, if, and I'm not saying anything bad about Corey, I like him a lot, he's a really good fighter. But if you step back and the guy comes to you and you have a really good one too, he got respect. If you don't hit them, with anything hard when you go backwards, they just keep walking you down. And the moment you start walking backwards, you get tired, you're losing the fight in the eyes of everybody else, and you're kind of... You cannot always walk forward. I cannot just walk forward to him. He's a big, strong guy. But if I go backwards and I make him respect me, then I can take over. That's very important if you want to compete and if you want to fight. Pressure fighting is not walking forward with my hands up and getting points. That, was, that wasn't what Peter Young was doing. He was very smart. Just to give you an example, every time we do something, why we do this. You need to be able to attack, but you know when you punch somebody, it's 99% that they're gonna punch you back. Don't worry about that shit, because you know you do it in training, so you know when you punch them, you set up really a trap, because you already know what they're gonna do, and you punch them back. That's why it's important to know forwards and backwards. We do one more, only punches, um, it's high and lows. Very important, the body shots. It's dangerous, again, the knee is involved. If he makes a body shot to my uh, here, to my whatever, boom, there's a knee. 
it's, it's very dangerous, especially later on when we're going to use our knees. But it's very important to hit the body. And that was saying, hey, he did very good the first two rounds with the body shot, but he stopped at one moment. So we're going to go. The first one is very simple. We go high with the jab, high with the jab, boom, low with the left hand, boom, and kind of hop a little backwards. So instead of doing this and hanging in there and getting hit with the right hand, I'm going to touch him, touch him, step back, right hand. Again, up, down, little hop. First of all, if you hit him there and he makes a left hook, you miss and you can hit him, but it's also set up for power punch. One, two, use your legs. This is, this is where everything comes from. Not this, not this. Not this. What? <laughs> High, low, step back, hands are here, right cross. Okay? That's the one we're gonna do. Yeah, one more with the same part and then we go from there. Let's go! I'm going to lean, get a take that or a kick. But if I put my, both my legs, just use it as a hop, a little hop. A little hop, that's it. Yes, that's it. I mean, the way he explains it, the way he demonstrates these techniques, it just flows so, so nicely. It flows together so nicely. You know? It's a, it was a very awesome workshop, and uh, if y'all missed it, well, at least I'm here to take the video to make sure you don't miss it. All right, let's get back into it. Are you enjoying your time here, sir? It's great. The guys picking it up very good. They, they have already a very good base already, so it's very easy to go to drills. We just did our hands. Now we're going to use our hands and our knees, so we're going to build from here. But uh, no, it's it's great. Good atmosphere and good students. Fucking awesome. Awesome, man. Man, Henry was awesome. I think he's the best striking coach in the UFC. And the fact that we're able to get him in a small town, upstate New York, dropping straight up knowledge bombs, and helping grow the fight community here, I think it's awesome. Thank you guys for having me here, you know. Um, it's always cool to be, uh, to be in a new place, to see new people, to, to meet new people that I kind of have the same passion as me. Um, and what I just said in the beginning is very, very important. I said it to every place I go. Is uh, <clears throat> People always think when they hear Sanford MMA or ATT or whatever, they always think that it's always uh, the best trainers and the best this and the best that. And, um, but that's not true, you know. We're still losing fights with our big gym against people that have a very small gym with very regular coaches. And regular, I mean in the sense of um, there, are, there are coaches that they, they call them the, the, the best coaches in the world or whatever. There's, there's an award for that even. You can, be a, I mean, you can be coach of the year. I've been nominated once in like 12 years or something. But I just don't believe in that. Why I do it is because this kid on the back or because I see you doing your thing or I see her doing her thing, because I like to train people. I don't have, I'm not in competition with another trainer. I'm also not a trainer that says what you're doing is wrong. If I see you doing on the back something that's different than, than me, instead of criticizing it, I will ask you why you do it. And maybe you have a very good reason to do it differently than me, because I don't know, not know everything. We win a lot of fights, but that doesn't determine. It's also the athletes that you have. If you have 10 very good athletes, if you have John Jones, for instance, if you have Conor McGregor, that's also the only guy from the, the gym in Ireland that became so famous. But the coach became two times trainer of the year with one student really. This is also the student that you have. I am lucky too, I have a lot of good students. But what attracts the good students is the group. Everybody, when they come to my gym, and again, we have a connection now, like I already have a connection with Eugene, but we have a connection now. You guys send me a DM on Instagram, I don't do it the same, maybe not the same hour, but I text you back if you have a question, because we have, we have a connection. I only go to places where I have a connection. You think I cannot do five seminars in New York now? I can. Everybody knows I'm in town, but I just want to go where I have connections. Because again, you need to get paid for your work. But you need to do it because you like it. It's Friday night, one day before three of my guys are fighting. They have, they have a dinner now all together and I'm doing this. And I text them and they all love it. That's why they like me. They love me because I'm like this. 
I don't care about all the other shit. But that being said, is again, the group in my gym is the culture that we created is that we have a group of people that when you come, you're welcome. You know? People train with you the right way, even if it's Michael Chandler, it doesn't matter who it is. Everybody knows the rules are the same. You conduct to the rules that we have in the gym. First of all, you need to respect every time when you step in the door, you need to be happy that the lights are on, that the shower works, that you can pee and that you can train here with your guys. That's, a, that's not a privilege. That's, not, that's something that's special, right? Because if you start a martial art way, like I did since I was eight years old, and since you did for a long, long time, we know it's a, it's a way of life. This is kind of my, this is all I have. It's, it, it sounds weird, but if this falls away, I probably just, I don't know what's going to happen with me. This is my way of life. This is what I do. This is, this is me. And this, that I create in the gym. When I feel awful, I go to the gym. Why? Because I see the guys there and I'm like, I forget that I'm sick. I come home and uh, You understand what I mean? And you build that because you build that with a group of people. People that you don't know yet, but along the way, you're going to figure out. Not everybody is your friend. I, I, my father always told me, like, not everybody is, uh, everybody's different, but not everybody's difficult, you know? That's just the way it is. Uh, if it doesn't work, I make it work. Because in fighting, it's the same thing. If you fight and you want to fight, it, it's called fighting for a reason. It's not easy. It's not for everybody. I, was, I won a lot of fights, but I never won the K1. There was a very big reason for that, because I wasn't focused totally on my sport. I was focused on other stuff. I got a very young father. A lot of stuff that happens if you want to focus. So you need to be 100% sure. If you want to do this, you need to be 100% in. But, but to do that, you need all these guys here to help you out. Okay? Yeah. Think we got it, right? <laughs> I don't, normally I don't do that shit, but... <laughs> that's a documentary right there. Yeah. Make a nice group photo, yeah? Thank you, guys. So that'll be it for today's episode. Guys, I want to give a shout out to all you guys for supporting the channel. I want to give a shout out to Legends Martial Arts for allowing me to film the event. And shout out to Henry Hooth for putting on such an exceptional workshop. Uh, guys, I could not fit the entire workshop on this video. Because if I did, the video would be about three and a half hours long. But if you want to know when the next Henry Hooft workshop is going to take place in Legends Martial Arts, uh, contact them. The link will be in the description below. So thank you to everybody who supported the channel. 2022 is going to be an absolutely awesome year filled with uh, a lot of awesome content, including live events hosted by NYC Fight TV. And uh, it's, it's going to be absolutely awesome. So everybody out there, thank you so much. This is NYC Fight TV, where the fight life is life.
my destiny. By the time I reach my full peak, all of the oppositions will be deceased. Fall back and stand aside, cause I'm coming forward, I'm ready to eat. With eyes open, the game's over, you've awakened the beast. I'm in charge.